வணக்கம் நீர்களே மெய்வழியின் சமூக வழி கூடாக உங்களை மீண்டும் சந்திப்பதை இட்டு மிக்க மகிழ்ச்சி அடைகின்றேன் தை மாதம் என்றதுமே எல்லோருக்கும் ஒரு பரபரப்பான எழுச்சி மிக்க மொழியோடும் மொழியினுடைய வாழ்வியலோடும் இனத்தினுடைய வாழ்வியலோடும் எங்களுடைய நினைவுகளை மீட்டி பார்க்கின்ற காலங்களாக இந்த தை மாதம் இருக்கின்றது பொங்கல் விழாவிற்கான எழுச்சி பொங்கல் திருவிழாக்களோடு எங்களுடைய உணர்வுகள் ஒட்டியதான நினைவுகளோடு நாங்கள் மீண்டும் ஏதோ எங்களுடைய இனங்கள் தொடர்பான அடையாளங்களை தேடுகின்ற காலமாக இந்த காலம் இருக்கின்றது இதற்காக பல அமைப்புகள் பலவிதமான செயற்பாடுகளை இந்த காலங்களில் முன்னெடுப்பதை நாங்கள் அவதானித்து வருகின்றோம் அந்த வகையில் பிரித்தானிய தமிழர் வர்த்தக சம்மேளனம் ஒருங்கிணைக்கும் ஒரு முக்கியமான நிகழ்ச்சி மரபு திங்கள் என்ற நிகழ்வினை ஒழுங்கமைத்திருக்கின்றார்கள் ஒழுங்கமைத்து வருகின்றார்கள் கடந்த காலம் அதற்கான அங்குரார்ப்பணம் மேற்கொள்ளப்பட்டு இந்த வருடமும் கோவிட் நைன்டீன் இருந்தாலும் கூட இந்த காலங்களிலும் கூட இணைய வழி கூடாக நிகழ்வுகளை ஒழுங்கமைத்து வருகின்றார்கள் அந்த வகையில் இது முக்கியமாக ஏன் முன்னெடுத்து செல்லப்பட வேண்டும் என்ற பல விவாதங்கள் பல கருத்துக்கள் பல கலந்துரையாடல்கள் பல வழிகளில் மேற்கொள்ளப்பட்டு வருகின்றன இன்றும் கூட மிக முக்கியமாக இன்று நாங்கள் இது தொடர்பாக பேசுவதற்காக எங்களுடைய அன்புக்குரிய நண்பர் ராஜ்குமார் அவர்களை அன்போடு அழைக்க இருக்கின்றோம் மிக முக்கியமாக இளையவர்களுக்கு இந்த நிகழ்ச்சி இந்த நிகழ்வு கூடாக தமிழ் மரபு தொடர்பான ஒரு விழிப்புணர்வை அல்லது அவர்கள் அறிந்து கொள்ளப்பட வேண்டிய விடயங்களை பகிர்ந்து கொள்வதற்காக விஷயமாக இந்த நிகழ்ச்சி ஒழுங்கமைக்கப்பட்டிருக்கின்றது இந்த நேர்காணல் இந்த கலந்துரையாடல் ஆங்கில மொழி ஊடகமாகத்தான் ஊடாகத்தான் நடைபெற இருக்கின்றது அது வேண்டுகோளுக்கு நாங்க மெய்வழி அதை செய்வதற்காக முன் வந்திருக்கின்றது ஏனென்றால் வளர்ந்து வருகின்ற அல்லது எங்களுடைய இரண்டாவது தலைமுறை என்று சொல்லப்படுகின்ற இளம் பிள்ளைகளுக்கு இது தொடர்பான ஒரு நேரடியான தொற்றுதலை அல்லது நேரடியான ஒரு விளக்கத்தினை அளிப்பதற்காக ஆங்கிலத்து கூடாக இந்த உரையாடலை நிகழ்த்த வேண்டும் என்ற ஒரு வேண்டுகோளுக்கு இணங்க மெய்வழி இந்த நிகழ்வை ஒழுங்கமைத்திருக்கின்றது அந்த வகையில் ராஜ்குமாரை அன்போடு வரவேற்றுக் கொள்வோம் ஸோ ஐ எம் சோ எக்ஸைட்டட் டு ஹாவ் ஹிய அகடமிக் ஹியூமன் ஹியூமன் ரைட்ஸ் சோஷியல் ஆக்டிவிஸ்ட் மிஸ்டர் ராஜ்குமார் I am excited to talk about his involvement and interest on Tamil heritage. Hi Rajkumar. Thank you. Uh, thank you for uh, inviting me to this uh, discussion. Thank you uh, Maywali Media and uh, and Rajita for uh, um, it's great pleasure for me to be here. Uh it's our duty to repeat, respect, celebrate uh, and preserve our heritage uh, Tamil culture. tamil language tamil civilization tamil history and tamil ethnicity as well so so far lots of uh, organization they are doing lots of work to carry on this project uh, on this basis the tamil british uh, british tamil uh, chamber of commerce they have started this project from last year as a representative of the tamil british uh, chamber of commerce could you explain me what's the what are the objectives they have and uh, uh why do you think that we want to celebrate this event uh thank you rajita the 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 main objective or the vision of this uh the whole uh project uh, is to s- somehow entrench the tamil identity uh, or institutionalized tamil identity within our um uk or uh, in the country that we live in specifically that we are talking about united kingdom but also mm-hmm. uh, as you know that in canada that tamil heritage month is already been proclaimed as kind of january month of january as tamil heritage month so similarly uh, not only just we wanted to proclaim the month but also to make sure that uh, within the host community and especially uh, within institutions that there is an understanding of how rich and how kind of mm-hmm. um uh, how it, how how old and celebrated the language the way of life of tamils and multifaceted identity because sometimes often um the host communities or like you know fellow citizens see that our identity is purely a, a struggle centric or political identity but it's actually we wanted to kind of portray the truth and the actual dimension of tamil identity in general so in that sense uh, i wanted to reiterate this point that british tamil chamber of commerce made sure that even though they sponsored this event and they instigated this event last year uh it is kind of an event celebrated by all tamil 
organizations across oh. the United Kingdom and owned by all organizations. So it is not just uh, an organizational or just one organization, because as you know, these projects cost a lot of money to start and kickstart. So thankfully, British Channel Chamber of Commerce funded that project to start off at the initial stages, but we expect all organizations to join. And in fact, over the last uh, 18 months, many organizations have joined and young and uh, young uh, members of Tamil um, uh, you know, diaspora organizations have also joined. So in that sense, uh, that's kind of a simple vision and that's where we are heading towards. Very nice to see that British Tamil Chamber of Commerce is welcoming all the organizations and all the people and all ages to celebrate this event. And I would like to ask you about younger generation understanding of Tamil heritage and its value. Uh, you may have that feeling or understanding of young people while you are working with them. Uh, so how do they self-identify themselves? Uh, uh, how do they feel that they they are Sri Lankan, British, or Tamil. What is the expression of that? In fact, the last 10 years, I think I would say um, the last 10 years is in a renaissance period about Tamil kind of youth, or especially youngsters uh, talk, thinking about, talking about the identity. And also I have seen that more and more youngsters, especially when they enter into university life, uh, they like to, and they are trying to seek their identity. Uh, because during their schooling ages, and especially with parents, as you know, that uh, community mm -hmm. hardworking parents might be actually very busy providing what is needed for the children. And they would not have this time to have discussions about, uh, you know, face to face about what is our identity, where we come from. Uh, often they talk about struggle related identity, what actually mm -hmm. made us to flee our, uh, um, you know, country and so on. But then when it comes to the, the richness and the underlying reasons why Tamil existed and Tamil kind of thriving so so many thousands of years, that kind of discussions are not happening in households. So when they go to university, they'll, they see the other communities, like for example, if you look at, um, you know, a Punjabi community or Gujarati community, or if you look at the other South Asian communities, when they look at preserve their identity, uh, our youth also trying to seek out for the identity and see, uh, you know, uh, so in, in, in that sense, I would say uh, the, the British Tamil identity is thriving and then they see and that there is kind of, you know, uh, variance how some wanted to portray themselves more of their kind of linguistic identity or their um, the um, national identity as Tamil, but also generally the Tamil identity is kind of fostered and aspired by most of the youngsters. But the, 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 the trickiest part is when they wanted to follow Tamil identity, we hear a lot of different uh, different kind of definitions and, and kind of connotations. So, uh, you know, as the parents would say, oh, either than Tamil identity, and you know, that, that, that kind of a standard tagline kind of mm. uh, negates the fact how plural and how diverse our identity is. I, th I think in, in that sense, youngsters are trying to reach out uh, to understand the pluralistic nature of the Tamil identity, multifaceted identity. So in that sense, I would say uh, there is a, a, a massive kind of uh, seeking or massive kind of interest in seeking has started. That's interesting. Uh, so while these people are showing their, why these young people shows their interest on Tamil heritage, I think the families have the responsibilities to pave the path of understanding of Tamil uh, heritage. Uh, as you have uh, involvement with the young people, how do you feel about the Tamil uh, families in diaspora? How do they adjust their life in England? And what are the interests they have to pass on this heritage there to, to the children? Uh, in fact, the families, uh, I feel that families trying to force sometimes them, some of the values, thinking that uh, these values will help uh, them to actually uh, be good citizens and be kind of uh, the kind of children they want to be. And, and in fact, I don't think that is a very healthy uh, way to push identity because when they really understand the identity in a point of view, 
uh, how and, and where we come from uh, searching our roots, uh, that will have more kind of a long term effect, long term effect in the sense that uh, that, that they will really kind of, you know, uh, have conviction and kind of foster that identity. But I, I think it's partly uh, even the older generation, right, mm -hmm. uh, our, our, the first generation, especially um, who came to this country and really work hard to um, um, provide whatever needed for their children, because, you know, it is not easy fleeing a, a genocide and, and trying to go to a new country and set, set up the life and, and adapting uh, the environment. But on the other hand, they themselves haven't really explored uh, much mm -hmm. about the identity apart from their, uh, uh, you know, um, village level, or maybe probably uh, the, the the kind of um, practices they would have actually followed uh, their ancestors, or maybe religious identities in general. Mm. But really, going down to the Tamil identity, uh, there is kind of a gap even within the older generation. In fact, that is what dividing the, the older generation or the parents in the household could not be able to kind of inspire. The younger generation to uh, follow the identity based on uh, the merits rather than saying oh yeah my parents are from this identity this is what i have to follow uh, and that kind of prescriptive uh, idea it is not working i think but i, I think you know Arajita, one, one thing we need to understand we don't have to worry too much about forcing this identity because the richness and the the merits itself will speak as long as we can talk about it as long as we can explain like programs like this. Yes, definitely dialogue should take among both generations, I think. Uh, and as you mentioned about the gap, um, how uh, our Tamil community or British Tamil Chamber of Commerce uh, is working on to fill this gap and what are the activities uh, so far taken? I think um, I would say that there are many organizations along uh, the British Tamil Chamber of Commerce who are actually doing amazing jobs in this. Like I would actually say there are a lot of Tamil schools have joined in recently because they are well placed within the communities uh, that they could uh, start engaging with parents and children in the level that they can take uh, this project further. And also, I would just to name a few, like the, the Tamil young organization, like Tamil Students Initiative have played a ma massive role with us because I'm also a co-founder of Tamil Institute for Leadership Excellence, which is an organization that works with youngsters to empower their uh, leadership skills as well as uh, their soft skills, but partly to give them empowerment, leadership, uh, and, and that kind of uh, or, um, a self-esteem and motivation, it is important for them to understand their roots and understand where they come from. They, they should be clear and they should have some clarity in their identity. So Family Institute, uh, so part of our role, we also work with these youngsters. So there are there are many organizations within, the, especially the Tamil Sox with the universities. This year, uh, they have a uh, joint hand to put up a lot of projects. So uh, apart from the major event or the main event which is organized by British Tamil Chamber of Commerce the 16th and 17th of this month but there are many other events happening uh, like which is part of Tamil uh, Heritage Month. I, I've seen institutions uh, and smaller uh, media outlets are also started to celebrate they are putting logos and they're saying it's part of Tamil Heritage Month and and I have to also thank Maybelli doing that as well in their programs uh, so I, I think the awareness is coming on and and not just one organization this is what I wanted to re-emphasize again and again and all the media people as well just to want to make sure to make it more common and make it owned by everyone rather than just us like you know the chamber of commerce did this or chamber of commerce introduced this because it, it is important that it is a, a common project all all of us are celebrating and in fact we are sponsoring it uh, and and of course over time there will be new organizations as as a group might come together and take this a hallmark event uh, into the future as you emphasize that uh, tamil heritage month is not only for british tamil chamber of commerce but everyone have to uh, join to celebrate, protect and preserve this, uh, our culture. 
and uh, other one more thing rajkumar what we can understand of the tamil heritage uh, month act and what do you are trying to do with the parliament or british government I think before we go to the parliamentary level or countrywide, uh, there is a massive job to be done within our community. So it's, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not sure whether all of the, uh, the the people who are working on Tamil Heritage Month will completely agree with me on this, but I personally feel that we have to do an awful lot of work within our community. So this mm -hmm. is kind of a passion for me for a long time that I felt ever since that we only talk about one identity which is our struggle related identity or maybe our, our kind of uh, political identity but tamil identity is multifaceted but they, mm. i always emphasize this so it is so important within our society to make sure to understand so let me give you some examples just one or two examples so one example i would say is that you know we have this rich tradition so many thousand years old and and you know very well you are well read in tamil literature that you know the five lands like you know um uh, line land masses like you know kurunji mullai marudam neither each land master had his own habit of food like you know how they cook how they um, serve uh, what kind of uh, ingredients and recipes and so on so this is all evolved over thousands of years and sangam literature very clearly laid, lays out not just this kind of a table food but also how it's cooked how it's consumed and the nutritious values and the uh, the the, um, the siddha marathwam uh, behind it and so on but yet we could not recognize or we could not happily or proudly express tamil tamil food as tamil cuisine i mean mm -hmm. we have hundreds of hundreds of restaurants in the uk right and 99% of the customers of these Tamil restaurants are Tamils and, and people who are really uh, enjoying Tamil food, even the younger generation. You know, when you go to a meeting, if there is Tamil food, it's always a winner. So <laughs> why can't we label or brand Tamil restaurants as Tamil cuisine? So instead of kind of bringing out a South Indian, Sri Lankan or Asian food, because it, we are in a confusion by default without expressing our identity, our because food plays a massive role in human life, because food is the most foremost and most important identity that you can put forward. So if we are not expressing our identity in our food, that plays a big, big impact. So I think we had to start from food. We had to start from way of life, like medicine. Uh, and, and see, there's about 2,500 to 3,000 doctors who works for NHS here, Tamil doctors. And most of them, uh, you know, fled the um, country uh, from uh, f due to war, <laughs> but also the second generation uh, Tamils coming along. And see, you know, thousands of years, the ingredients we used in Siddha Vaidya, like, you know, a simple ingredient, I will say, mulahu. As you know, mulahu, it's pepper, the peppercorn. Uh, even they say, isn't it? Like, you know, if you have 10 peppercorns, you can also eat in an enemy's house. So you say, <laughs> mulahi randal, munala. So they say that, right? Mm -hmm. Now, all the pepper, the, the ancient name for pepper is curry. When, mm -hmm. when we mean, you know, cooking curry, that means we actually use black pepper and that's how we use it. So the, the very word curry, it's a Tamil word. So mm. how are we not taking through? And then the medical properties. Now, if you go to central London and if you go to any of these food outlets or the rest, uh, especially the, the takeaway food outlets, like, you know, uh, they sell turmeric shots, manjal, like turmeric mm. shots as the best. So they mix turmeric with orange juice and they are about three, four pounds. And, and you know, Ooh. we have this tradition of medicine and food, and especially medicine, all of the spices that we use uh, in our kitchen cupboard, uh, you know, Patti that we use mostly, are so useful. And in corporate companies and international pharmaceutical companies are patroning this ancient tradition within the Tamil Siddha Murai or Tamil Siddha Marathuam to make money. And why don't we label it and that, you know, celebrate with our 
uh, you know, fellow citizens in these countries and say, these ingredients comes from ancient tradition of Siddha Marathwa, which is also Tamil medicine, right? And, and uh, yeah. you would actually see in most of the world drinking, um, you know, cinnamon tea or cumin seed, uh, sirahatani and so on. Even for Corona, a lot of people actually try to go <laughs> kind of natural remedies and so on. But, but we need to go next step. We need to actually do research, do monitor uh, all of these impacts. So we have doctors, they should be able to do that. They should be able to publish papers in scientific journals saying this is a Tamil tradition so many years and, and how, what is the effect of turmeric? And in fact, already it was proved. So we should be proud of our identity. We have thousands of years of medicinal kind of properties. So I could go on and talk about many aspects of life, which we could be proud of. And especially I'll just label one more about the, the whole idea of um, um, the, the gl global warming, which is kind of, which is really threatening the very existence of humanity, right? So the, the, the humanity have ever only learned recently, like I mean, saying that generally in the Western countries about the importance of the nature and preserving nature. Now the very celebration of Pongal it's, it's a celebration of thanksgiving to nature, especially thank, thanking sun for providing the, the best harvest and, and providing sunlight for livelihoods and so on. So in our festivals, we have this intrinsic uh, idea of nature and preserving nature. So I think to answer your question directly, first, we have to do a lot of work within our community, especially Tamils here, to aspire the multifaceted identity that we have. And then once we have that, once we are proud of that, and once everyone knows that, I think getting through parliament and getting a resolution or getting a proclamation, it is not hard because, you know, we are citizens of this country. We pay taxes, we work here, we play a massive role in civic life here, right? And celebrating our identity, celebra celebrating our culture, heritage, it's fundamental human rights. So it wouldn't be a problem at all to get parliament or, 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 or national proclamation at some point. But then to do that, first of all, we need to get Tamils behind us over time. So that's that's <laughs> kind of the challenge. That's uh, you explain clearly in every area, especially in the food. That's we always there's the pongal also related to the food, isn't it? So that's I have been to the Malaysian Food Festival. That's it. Well, it was organized by the Malaysian uh, embassy here. So that's that that time I thought that's why we can't we have the festival like this. So so that they let uh, they they let everyone to taste all the kind of foods of Malaysian traditional food. So. So, we, so that that time, that's what we got the rich food and rich culture behind us. Why don't we have so that time? I thought that we have to do one or organize one sort of things like this. So, as you said, as you mentioned about this, all this, uh, you know, that's a from the uh, Sangagalam and then then the, the all the Siddha Madhuva the um, medicines uh, things mm -hmm. and then everything. When when we have this, why don't we celebrate ourselves upside? So and at, at least claim claim that it's ours and 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 make sure the rest of the humanity gets it free because as you know uh, the neem oil or the verpamaram verpamilai yeah. or uh, murukamilai these days like you know murunga all of this in commercialized to a level that we haven't claimed yet and it comes from our tradition and we That's used true. it and it should be free for the rest of the humanity nobody should patent this and make money out of it. This is also a very interesting area to get to know more about it. Um, will be any presentation include in this Tamil heritage event activities? I'm sure uh, that, uh, you know, we, they, they, over time and especially the organizing committee will think about including because last year we brought uh, Siddha Dr. Siddha Marthwar as uh, Ku Sivaraman to speak as a keynote address. And we will also get some of the speeches this year. And this year, uh, I'm trying to get an environmentalist perspective on Tamil identity and Tamil uh, heritage. But as you said, uh, we part of the workshop that I conduct at the Tamil 
um, Institute for Leadership Excellence, uh, we make sure that one of the workshops, it's a six workshop, six separate sessions, but one of the workshop is very specifically dedicated. It's about three hours workshop, specifically dedicated Siddha Marathuam and uh, Tamil cuisine. Because I think the younger generation is really interested to know more and they're starting to cook as well. So I, I, I think I think the, the understanding is the older generation already, already know cooking and already know the Siddha Marathuam. So it'll be really like, you know, trying to sell some, I mean, it's harder to push, but I think the younger generation is keen to know more. So, but it's a good point that you have made, and I'm sure we will discuss this, whether we could have an element of uh, talking about this as a campaign point of view, because, you know, yes. and uh, Rajita, some people say, oh, it's, uh, it's, it's rice, it's not yours, or that is not yours, this is not yours. I wouldn't say this, like, you know, rice is cooked in China, in Thailand, in India, but then they, they still call Chinese or Thai food or Indian uh, or, you know, whatever, like if it's Punjabi, Punjabi food, or if it's Kerala, it's Kerala food, but they all use rice as table food. It doesn't matter because you might use rice, you might use puttu or, uh, you know, roti or whatever it is, but there is a tradition of cooking and then you label it. So you don't have to worry too much about, are you using the same ingredients or not? Because across mm. the world, they use the same ingredient, but then they label it provided they have this uh, tradition of their food habits. Thank you, Rajkumar, for the very detailed information and really enjoyed it. Uh, Rajkumar, I would like to ask you, as you mentioned that earlier, you have been working, uh, you have been running a leadership program for young students. What are the interests they have uh, about Tamil? And uh, apart from the food or cuisine, uh, do they have any interest on uh, history and what did they understand so far? So the, 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 the interest even like uh, it started within me as well when, when we were working with my own as my students at university when I teach there, there's always about, you know, out of the cohort, there'll be six or seven Tamil students in that. Um, so we, we there, there was kind of discussion just inspired me to start this workshop because some of them didn't really understand even about the, the the eastern civilizations especially like you know tamil civilizations or even about what 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 happened in uh, uh in, in in that part of the world so the the western education system talks about romans worse come worse they will talk a little bit about mesopotamia uh, and and egyptian cultures or scenarios, uh, civilizations. So when they go through school throughout, and then once they get to university, that's the time they realize, oh, the world is not confined to Rome. The world is not confined to the Western civilization. So they are kind of, they started to ask this question that the Western civilization, especially like, you know, countries are very cold and they could not produce food throughout the year. So they could only produce food about three or four months because they have harsh winters. So they can't really claim they had a thriving civilization. And then they looked at, and then once they find out through internet and all of this, they found out there are so powerful civilizations existed. And then once they come to know, oh, this is something to do with Tamil. And then they started to know about it. Then they started to kind of find out, well, if there is a strong civilization existed, and what is their lifestyle like? What is their kind of, what is the kind of fashion they aspire to? Uh, what is the kind of games they play, the social, cultural, economic aspects? I mean, I can go on talking about hours and hours on this topic. I'm so passionate, but this is, this is what inspired them to lo look for uh, mm -hmm. uh, evidence, evidence-based approach, because they would not want to see like parents saying, this is what it is, that they want evidence. So luckily, right we are getting so much evidence surfacing through Kuladi now and also mm -hmm. new researchers suggest that hindus valley civilization which is the uh, indus valley nahari the writing system used is the ancient proto tamili or tamili ancient system like and also they connect this uh, the name of ur to Mesopotamia. So all of these evidence are surfacing now, but unfortunately the world order would not be rewritten because you know whoever is in power, they don't want to change the history or the narrative of the history. But then our youngsters are keen to understand. Then once they're keen to understand that uh, there are a lot of material in Tamil, so we as a generation who can read and write Tamil as well as speak English, we should we have a responsibility to translate or explain what we learn in Tamil literature or even 
coming from Sangam literature, even Tolhapiam, if you take Tolhapiam or Tirukural and, and, and the righteousness, Aram Sarandaval, and how progressive to talk about an Aram Sarandaval with so many thousands of years. So until, you know, 200 years or until 150, 200 years, you know, these certain countries uh, in the West, they claim to be the more civilized and more democratic nations, didn't give vote to women. So women didn't have rights to vote, even in a so-called American constitution when they passed, they say the free people and the government for the people, by the people and so on. Even after that, women didn't have writing to vote. I mean, the, the, the rights to vote. So in that sense, if you really look at ancient um, uh, um, Tamil way of life, where the, the female and male poets have you know, challenged and also challenging the authority itself, there's so much evidence uh, in, in, in that. So, for example, if you look at when Galileo Galilei tried to say that the, the world uh, is uh, not flat, the church would hang him for that, isn't it? So that's, that's kind of the fate of it, of the West. But when, when you see that uh, in Pandya, uh, you know, it, it could be a, a story, but uh, like, you know, Nakiran challenging the, the ultimate supreme God and still walking through because saying if it's wrong it's wrong even if, in, if it's said by the god so th this is a kind of i mean i see the story behind or see the the the, um, the you know teaching behind it rather than the religious practices across i see that we brought up in a way of challenging and these are the progressive values that the youngsters are looking forward so once they look forward and once they see these values they are inspired to learn and they're going towards that so that's kind of uh, i would actually say have inspired them and they're connecting more with the more and more um the 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 progressive nature that they feel and they're associated with our ancient traditions that's right apart from our food clothes there are so many valuable matters consist in our tamil heritage which we have to bring for more discussion uh to wind up our talk what is your message for our younger generation about the Tamil heritage, Rajkumar? So very clear message is that your identity is not only ancient, but also very progressive. And you have to do research, you have to seek, because don't just believe somebody saying this is what Tamil culture is, that is what Tamil culture is. I could say Tamil culture, it's kind of goes beyond religious boundaries. So that's one of the important things. So we, we, we are not confined to religious boundaries, but not even linguistic boundaries. People might think it's just, just language. Yes, language is a very important part because that's how our way of life being communicated and conducted. So you have to go beyond that to look at, it's a, a life based on Aram or righteousness and looking at all of the other aspects. So if you dig deep and do your own research, and you will find more interesting stuff. In fact, what it'll do is it'll actually inspire you. It'll build your self-esteem. It'll build your leadership qualities. It'll give you the motivation to aspire good things in life. So nothing cannot go away. So even you don't have to get involved in Tamil heritage related stuff, but you could do your own aspiring careers, but that'll give you the, the kind of inspiration and self-esteem for you to carry on your life and be successful. That's the message I would like to say. Thank you very much, Rajkumar, for your valuable time and your excellent detailed information about Tamil values. Your passion, your interest on Tamil heritage, as well as your contribution on Tamil young people may have significantly impact in future, I hope. And I would like to thank you, British Tamil Chamber of Commerce and all the volunteers uh, who are carrying out all this uh, very important uh, event. So I hope all the families and young people will join to celebrate this event. Yeah, in fact, uh, the through schools, uh, Tamil schools, uh, British Tamil Chamber of Commerce is trying to reach out to uh, any younger. The, you mean the 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 the. the the children rather than the younger generation, the university age, uh, but we're talking about children. In fact, last year there was plans to uh, encourage them to write essays, uh, poetry, but uh, in, in Tamil and English, one of the purpose that we wanted to encourage them to write in English is that we wanted to make a mechanism that when they write an essay in English about Tamil history or Tamil identity or Tamil heritage, uh, 
we would ask them to attest that by their class teacher to say that uh, it was written by so and so. So in that way, the class teacher would also help them to correct the language and also understand uh, our identity. So there are a lot of uh, initiatives was planned, but unfortunately, uh, you know, during COVID time that could not actually go through as we planned. But just one thing I wanted to say before finishing, uh, you know, I'm so passionate uh, and also we all like to live the life, but then heritage, it is not about oldness. Now, in, if I say in Tamil, Marabu and Badu were Palame and Badu were. So we are not talking about Palame, we are talking about heritage. When when they say English heritage, it is something in, evolving. So we mm. can't go back and middle of Oxford Street wearing Komanam and say this is our nat you know, national dress. But things change, things adapt, but then the values won't change. So that's what I'm trying to say. So some people think if we, we're talking about Tamil identity and Tamil heritage, we wanted to go back to ancient times and live like that. No, it, it is actually also progressing and moving as well. So I just wanted to make sure, uh, you know, clearly lay like that. Thank you very much for interviewing me, Rajita. And also not to forget, uh, you know, Sam Pradeeban did an amazing job uh, for Tamil Heritage Month over the years. So I'd like to also uh, congratulate and wish Sam uh, for, on Maywali uh, initiative and the media. So thank you very much. Hopefully we can have more conversation. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. மறபு <laughs> வழங்களை <laughs> தமிழ் சமூகம் உருவாக்கும் என்ற நம்பிக்கையோடு உருவாக்க வேண்டும் என்ற வேண்டுகோளோடு உங்களிடமிருந்து அன்போடு விடை பெற்றுக் கொள்வேன் கொள்கின்றேன் எல்லோரும் இணைந்து இந்த தமிழ் மரபு திங்களை அஹ் உற்சாகத்தோடு எழுச்சியோடு கொண்டாட அவர்களோடு சேர்ந்து உங்களுக்கும் எங்களுடைய அன்பான அழைப்பினை விடுத்திருக்கின்றேன் நன்றி வணக்கம்